Oi, 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 face customizer is out, and this time for everyone. But it's a little bit overwhelming, isn't it? I mean, the, the first thing you did was probably slap on one of these ugly faces, twisted it into an ungodly abomination, and then threw your hands in the air and gave up. I mean, look, look that's what I did, anyway, I wouldn't judge. But no, fear not. I am here to try and streamline the process and make the entire thing more digestible. However, with this update has also come a bunch of things that aren't just face customizing. We have, for example, new eyebrows and the ability to unlink them. We have the ability to pose and scale ears now, as well as apply new ears up here if you're, you know, one of those filthy Final Fantasy players. The same goes for horns, and this one is amazing. I mean, you could always pose horns around, but now you can edit their starting position as well, so horn hair and custom helmets have never been better. We also have new teeth, as well as a tongue, and yes, it can be posed outwards in really weird ways. You know, sky's the limit. We can now also unlink beard and mustache, so you can make your Walter White without having to double model. Finally, there's also new eyes, but those are in colors, you know, in the mixer where you'd usually swap between different eyes irises and pupils. Anyway, when it comes to actual face customizing, you will be tempted to immediately start picking between these faces here and start sculpting, but I'm telling you this is a trap and I will tell you why very soon. I have here a 9 step guide to face customizer and I heavily recommend that you follow this guide if you are new to it, step by step. I will have chapters at the bottom of the video for each part. And here is a quick TLDR to those 9 tips. First, coloring the face. Resetting the face pose choosing a base face, and for the purposes of this video we'll mostly use the Hero Forge heroic face. Picking individual face pieces one at a time, using the amount sliders to, you know, fix them up a bit. And then the big one, face sculpting, one section at a time from chin to cheeks to mouth to nose to eyes to brow etc. Face posing, applying decals. Finally, refining whatever still looks off. Alright, <laughs> there you go. Now let's do all of that, but with way more detail. Before I get going, I, I, I want to stress that you don't have to do everything in this order. I mean, you can put decals on first, you can pose the face before you sculpt it. I, I just personally wouldn't recommend it, especially not if you're new. But anyway, let's get to the first step. Step number one, coloring a default face without decals. This is not a diehard rule, but if you are new, I recommend that you put colors on a face before you start sculpting. I also personally like to color the teeth, gums, and the tongue inside the mouth before I get started, as I kind of get annoyed if I know that it's plain white underneath. Also, I do not recommend putting decals on here, as it can make it harder to tell exactly how your face actually looks below it. On top of that, some of the old decal tricks are much less necessary now than they were in the past, but you will see that after we're done with the actual sculpting. Step number two, reset the face pose. Go into posing, this is the only thing we'll do in posing before we're done, and click the trash can to reset the pose. Models right now do not start out with unposed faces and having a completely plain face is important to seeing exactly what you need to do when you start sculpting. Step number three, the base face. So you, you'll want to decide, first of all, what kind of character and face you want to make. You know, is it an old character? Is it a young character? Is it a rookie? Is it a hardened veteran? You know, <laughs> I know it sounds obvious, but you'll want a clear idea before you really get going. In face, you then go into the main edit section up here at the top and you choose softness and potentially the age as well. However, I recommend that you don't actually touch the age option or the carved slider for that matter until after it's done. Yes, those options are really cool, but I will get to that later. Like, the point is you kind of want to do this afterwards. I also heavily recommend that you keep the base face as the default Hero Forge features, but there are exceptions to that rule and I'll get to that soon. Step number four, this is where we really get into the interesting stuff. Picking individual face pieces. Now, as I said, rather than starting out with one of the new face templates, I recommend that you start out picking individual face pieces one at a time. I usually start with chin, and then I work my way up to cheeks, then lips, then nose, then eyes, so on. The goal here is to get something that is as close to the face that you have in mind as possible before you start individually sculpting any of these face pieces. If you're new, I also recommend taking your time here to properly look at each face option individually because some of them have really nice textures, which you will not be able to replicate at a later stage with sculpting alone. One good example of this is these like indented cheeks here. This line you see cannot be recreated with the later options, so if you want these kinds of cool details, like I mean there's this other example like the creased aged foreheads. Or, or the dented nose. You have to choose those features now. You cannot achieve that with sculpting later. Step number five, the, the amount slider adjustments. So one more thing before you get to the actual face sculpting itself. A lot of these new face pieces look very, very silly, like lips that don't connect or gigantic weirdly shaped eyeballs, cartoonishly large lips, noses which twist the eyes around. A lot of these issues can be fixed in the sculpting later, but we're not going there just yet, okay? Patience. There is a better way. At the bottom, of most of the faces there's this sneaky little slider called the amount slider and it is about to change your life. 
If you click the cogwheel on it, you will see both shape and detail as individual sliders. Now this finally is where it matters that we maintain the baseline Heroforge base face underneath all of this. Reducing these sliders, be it through shape or detail, will slowly morph features back towards whatever base face you chose was. Therefore, we can moderate how cartoony or how over the top we want the new features to look by morphing them back in the direction of the baseline face. Now this isn't an ironclad rule, but I've personally found that having the base baseline here for heroic features below makes it far easier to balance out like how extreme some of the new stuff looks. However, <laughs> those of you who are clever might already be realizing how this thing can be exploited. Since this will revert features from what you picked to whatever you initially chose as the main face, it means you can get halfway versions of some of the really extreme stuff. For example, the Githyanki nose I made in the D&D video was by having an undead missing nose that was half twisted back into a human nose. I also created this rotting looking scarf face by twisting features back towards the undead cheekbone which was the main face below which normally is completely torn open but because I have new features on top of them and I went halfway it just kind of looks like this scarred messed up like damaged face. But Durf I hear you say why is all this necessary? I mean I just want to create a basic human face so why use the Hero Forge heroic face underneath just to put new features on top? Isn't this one here the sleek upturned features pretty good on its own without all the added complications? I mean if, if you want to just make like a Giga Chat model this is a pretty good starting point, right? Yes, it's it, it, it's fine. It doesn't even have the cartoony cartoony lips and eyes that you know some of the some of the other ones have. But if you haven't selected a different face underneath this, you have no amount sliders. I mean, look where my cursor is down here at the bottom right. Right, there are no amount sliders to moderate the features between if you do not have a face underneath this. So you need you need to try and view this as though you're having two faces at once, and you're basically finding a merge between them when you're using the amount slider. And if you do use a new face as the lower layer. I mean, you could use this face as the lower layer and then you start adding other features on top, right? <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's a bit cursed with the alien features. Anyway, if you do use a new face as the lower layer, the amount sliders can go very wonky because as I said before, a lot of the new features are kind of wacky and over the top. The lower layer doesn't have to be the hero Hero Forge heroic face, but I personally find it to be a very good balancing point to moderate the new features with. However, I will say you don't have to do this in any particular order. You can adjust the amount sliders immediately, before, after, during, sculpting whatever I just personally find it easiest to do it before I get sculpting and is also conveniently separated from all the actual editing face sculpting interfaces. Step number six, <laughs> face sculpting. This is where the fun begins. So now that you've balanced out some of those crazy features with the amount sliders, it is time to properly get face sculpting. You've got features that look vaguely the way you want them, but now we need to get into the really difficult nitty gritty stuff. Now to their credit, Sky Castle has given us some tools to make this more digestible in the form of these like separations, big edits and small edits. If you are new and you want to keep stuff simple for yourself, you can intentionally avoid the small edits, but honestly, there's some really cool stuff in there so I wouldn't really recommend it. Some of those small edits aren't so small if you feel me. So again, same order as before, I would start down with the chin, which only has big edits, that makes it simpler. Here you can make it asymmetrical, you can make it wider, smaller, longer, however, lesson number one for face sculpting comes here. Some of these sliders are extremely sensitive and just an inch in the wrong direction can twist the face beyond the recognition. The cheek section is much more advanced, and in this one the big edits are fine if you want like more pronounced cheekbones or a stronger jaw, but if you really want to bring nuance to a face, you'll need the small edits. Here you can decide whether individual parts of the cheek will look puffy or pronounced, you can make a gigantic Habsker, Habsburg ball face or a very slim down one with, you know, Giga Chad cheekbones. You can decide which parts of the cheeks are sunken in and which are broad. You can lower cheekbones, you can raise them, you can increase their depth, make them more pronounced, you know, the, the possibilities are really endless here. When it comes to lips, the small edits are also important, but what you'll learn later is that face posing is actually a bit limited in certain ways, and the big edits of the mouth face sculpting are actually quite vital to certain types of of poses for the face. For example, if you want a wide smile, you will have to use some of these lips core, scale, height, width, and depth sliders. The lip section is also the first place where I would really recommend you click this thing, linked sides. This is for example if you want to make like an upper lip thicker than the lower or vice versa. <laughs> and I, I guess you can also edit philatrum sizes, but you know, no one will notice that. For the nose, you can mostly skip the big edits unless you really think the nose you've chosen is too big. The small edits is what really matters here, and the important parts are divided into nose bridge A, nose bridge B, and the nose tips. Now those names might change after the beta. In particular, editing the height and depth of these can drastically change your nose and will be the main difference between a curved, crooked, straight or button-shaped nose. And I guess you can also do some other funky stuff like edit 
nostril sizes if you want to. With eyes, I really recommend lowering the core scale and width on almost every single option. I think the baseline Hero Forge eyes look really dumb and big, but obviously it depends on the kind of character and style you're going for. The rest of the eye options in small edits are barely noticeable, but if you use all of them together, it will make a big difference. Like, you can reduce or increase the size of eye bags, or make characters look more friendly or aggressive based on like how their eye sockets curve, or how much depth you want the sockets themselves to have, so it can be very good. Then, the brow. Uh, this one's honestly pretty simple compared to the ones we've just done. It's divided into three layers, basically inner, mid, and outer, and it basically just decides whether your character is an inherent frowner or not. However, I generally like to lower the eyebrows a little bit, like the core, the core scale, I like to pull that down a bit on most characters, just to give them a slightly more realistic look. Finally, the forehead and the main head. And I'll, <laughs> I'll be honest, this can be used for some really niche stuff, like making huge or small heads, you know. It can also give slight edits to hairstyles or like pulling the forehead in or out a little bit, but overall this is by far the least important category and I tend not to tinker around too much with it. At last, you want to go into the main edits and choose how far you want to go with the age and the carved sliders. Yes, we're finally getting back to these things. The reason I leave this for last is because it distorts the other features to such a degree that they also make it difficult to sculpt if you did them before you started. The carved slider will basically stylize a character and like really bring more like shading to things. It can be cool if you use a little bit of it, but in my opinion, and if you go too far it looks very silly and i mean the age slider oh my god i mean this is probably the best thing to come from the new update i mean the age slider is awesome like even for characters that aren't supposed to look old i like to pull this up a, just a little bit because like it it just adds so much nice detail to a character's face finally step number seven face posing face posing with the new system is actually really hard and moreover posing kind of melds into sculpting like i said earlier it's easier to make a frowny face if your brow was already pointed down from the sculpting at a proper smile is almost like impossible unless the main sculpting also made the character smile. Fortunately all of this complexity is basically just in the mouth section here. The other ones have very simple options like closing or opening the eyelids. Yes we can do that now! Or uh, opening the mouth, you know, making the cheeks squint or pull them in or outwards with a puff option. It's very good if you want to make a really fat character. I mean the brow is like the same as in the sculpting, you can just pull it up or down, you know, in or out or mid. The hard stuff as I said is in the mouth and it's really easy to accidentally create an abomination here. I mostly recommend creating subtle faces if you're new, like one-sided smirks or grumpy frowns. Step number eight, decals. You're probably a bit more familiar with this one than all the other ones. Now that you've finished, you know, you, well, you're not finished, you have a draft of a face, you can slap on decals. I stress that this is a draft. Whatever you make at first will likely need polishing. Like, I never finish a face in one sitting. Anyway, when it comes to decals, most of the old rules still apply. I still use eye socket shading, scars, lip decals, stubble, etc. But beware that you cannot use just the same colors from the old decals or it will really stand out like a sore thumb on a newer face. Step number nine, refining. At this point you just want to fix up whatever remains on your face, you know, if something looks off to you, go back into the options and twist it around, you know, go test those smaller options that seemed a little bit too niche or overwhelming to look at when you started, <laughs> like these sides of the nose options, you know, play around with them a bit and then after that you can finally enjoy your finished face. Now, it probably goes without saying, but this guide is focused on how you make normal looking faces, and I, I, I've left out a lot of options that I consider to be either too niche to be worth bloating and confusing this video with, or too minuscule to be worth mentioning right now. I also won't go into how you can use face sculpting to build, you know, custom monsters in this guide, but I, I may do that in the future. But anyway, before I end the video, I will add some side notes and answer a few commonly asked questions about this. One cool thing we can do now is, if you twist the face really hard underneath the helmet, you can actually pull the helmet along with it, and morph certain headpieces to look different and in some cases better. In the same vein, since you can now pose four pairs of ears around, you can use certain ones like these wing flaps to add extra detail to custom helmets in the same way you do with horns. Basically, like I alluded to earlier, the, the, the world of custom heads and helmets has been expanded significantly with this update. It's not just face customizer, it's kind of head customizer of anything. But can we double model with these? As you may have heard, during the beta it was extremely laggy to double model with face customizer, but they have since then opted optimized it significantly. I can't speak for how a phone is gonna handle it, but at least my PC can now handle double, double modeling fine with face customizer with no issues. But is there any point to double modeling solely to stack two faces? No, not, not really. Like, in my opinion, it ends up looking very silly trying to twist two faces into one another with different fe features, and I haven't yet found any reason to try and do so either. The system is so advanced that you can pretty much make any face you want to anyway. Like, in fact, unless you specifically want the added horns or stacked hairstyles, I'd recommend 
then just decapitating one of the models to reduce lag, and then using the second model solely to layer clothing and gear and just ignoring the head, basically. All in all, I think Hero Forge now more than ever is becoming, you know, less and less reliant on double modeling. With all the added decals and options that we've got in recent months, now face customizer and every Treasure Tuesday giving us great clothing and gear, I think for perhaps the first time we can genuinely make great models that will leave very little to be desired without having to clip and layer two models on top of one. And with that very inspiring message, it's time to wrap this up. If you made it this far, then thank you for watching, and I hope this guide proved useful to you. The system is obviously really advanced by Herefortune's usual standards, and it does take some time to learn, but when you get the hang of it, you'll have a field day, so just keep at it. And with that, goodbye!